Hi, I'm P.O. from Ratings.com. Sharp TVs are back in the U.S., and we've got one of their premium Aquos TVs, the Sharp Aquos XLED FV1. Is this new LED TV from Sharp worth your time and money, or are you better off looking elsewhere for your bright room needs? I'll tell you in just a second. We've bought and tested the 65-inch model, but our results are also valid for the 75-inch model. Regarding design, the TV looks like a premium product from the front. It has the typical thin bezels on three sides with a slightly thicker one on the bottom, and the frame around the bezels is made of brushed metal. It looks very nice. Note that the metal does not extend to the bottom bezel, which is just thicker plastic. The TV also has a good-looking metallic stand that supports it decently well. There's a bit of wobble when you push the TV front to back or side to side, but it's solid. The stand lifts the TV about 3.4 inches from the table, so most soundbars fit in front without blocking the screen. From the back, however, this TV looks rough. Seriously, look at that side profile. What is that? It almost looks like the TV has a handle of sorts up there. This must be the thickest TV released in years. Is this 2008? I just don't know anymore. This rather voluminous back is made entirely of plastic with a smaller bulge on the upper back that houses the TV's around speaker system, or ARSS+. The bulky bottom portion has the inputs as well as more speakers. There's a lot of flex on this section of the TV, but that's not unusual and won't cause any issues. The TV has four HDMI ports, two USB 2.0 ports, a LAN port, a digital optical audio out port, a 3.5 millimeter analog audio out port, and a composite in port. The composite port requires an adapter that is not included with the TV. HDMI ports 3 and 4 have HDMI 2.1 bandwidth, so they're both capable of up to 4K at 120Hz, while HDMI ports 1 and 2 are limited to 4K at 60Hz. One of the HDMI 2.1 ports doubles as an eARC port. It's kind of a bummer, as you're losing one of your high-speed HDMI ports if you have a soundbar connected to your TV. Some ports are side-facing and easy to access if the TV is wall-mounted. Unfortunately, the two HDMI 2.1 ports are down-facing and are much harder to access. You might have to do some light gymnastics when trying to connect cables to these ports while the TV is flat on the wall. The TV has a tie wrap on the back with a channel that goes through the stand for cable management. As with almost every TV that isn't from Samsung or LG, the Sharp comes with a popular Google TV smart interface. Google TV is a very powerful smart OS that gives you full access to the Google Play Store. Thus, it has a ton of apps and is very smooth to use. It comes with Google's other popular products like Google Assistant and Chromecast, and it also has an unexpected bonus, a bunch of ads that you can't turn off. Yeah, no, we totally expected that, as all TVs are like this now, and it sucks. The TV's remote is rather large, and it has a numpad, something which we rarely see these days. It's nice, although less tech-savvy users might be intimidated by all the buttons. Still, for us, it's a win. Like all remotes, it has buttons for quick access to the most popular streaming apps. It also has a button to activate Google Assistant, but for some reason, our remote was not picking up our voices, even though it looks like it has an integrated microphone. We don't know for sure if the issue is isolated to our remote or not, but it's worth noting if you're considering getting this TV. We've talked enough about remotes and bezels. Now, Let's move on to image quality. We're starting with the TV's standout contrast. It's truly fantastic. Its contrast ratio with local dimming enabled is among the best we've seen on an LED TV. Not too shabby. Blacks are incredibly deep on this TV. We'd even call them inky, a term we tend to keep for OLEDs. However, make sure that you keep local dimming enabled, as a sharps contrast without local dimming is mediocre, with washed out blacks. Turn on local dimming and never look back. Unfortunately, local dimming always introduces some blooming around bright highlights and subtitles, and the Sharp is no exception. It's good overall, we've seen worse, and we've seen better. Still, this is a small price to pay for the TV's fabulous contrast. Another thing that local dimming introduces are visible lighting zone transitions. The TV does a good job with these, but struggles with fast-moving highlights. There's noticeable aloing when bright objects are moving very fast against an otherwise dark background, with the leading edge of the moving object being visibly dimmer than the rest of it. We've been talking about the disadvantages of local dimming technology on LED TVs, but it works wonders with HDR content, 
as it lets the TV truly emphasize bright highlights against the rest of the image. The highlights really pop on this TV in dark scenes, and the TV even gets bright enough for them to stand out in well-lit scenes. Its reflection handling is good, and it does an outstanding job with indirect reflections, meaning reflections that come from ambient lighting. When it comes to handling direct reflections, or reflections that are from lights or windows placed directly in front of the screen, the TV is surprisingly mediocre. So keep these direct light sources away from this TV, and this TV truly shines. Get it? This TV also looks great in SDR. It's bright enough to overcome glare in well-lit rooms and does so easily if you keep direct lights away from the TV. This is one very bright TV. Let's hit you with a downer. This TV's viewing angle is very inadequate. Many LED TVs have bad viewing angles, but this one is a bit worse than usual. The image fades and looks washed out as you move even slightly off-center, and at wider angles, it fades out to the point of looking as if someone had turned down or turned off the TV's backlight. We'd expect that from a budget model, but it's surprising to see on a premium LED TV like the Sharp. Don't get this TV to host your Dune watching parties. It's better suited for one or two people seated directly in front. Did you think we were downcast with the viewing angle? Well, we're downright crying about this TV's pre-calibration accuracy. Out of the box, this TV has some of the worst white balance accuracy that we've ever seen. Reds and blues are massively overrepresented in all shades of white except near blacks. It also struggles with all desaturated colors, more so with yellows, cyans, and whites. The gamma is off, with dark scenes being too dark and brighter scenes being too bright. This TV truly isn't accurate out of the box. This is disappointing on a premium product like this one, and you'll have to get it calibrated if you care about accurate colors. Note, however, that Sharp did inform us that they're working on an update to improve the out-of-the-box accuracy of the TV, so things might improve in the future. Thankfully, the TV's accuracy in HDR is massively better than its SDR accuracy. Showing off the TV's fantastic contrast, the TV's near blacks are, surprisingly, well, black for an LED TV. It then follows the PQ-UTF curve nearly perfectly, which is just amazing. Like most TVs with quantum dot technology, the Sharp's color gamut is very wide. It has fantastic coverage of the commonly used DCI-P3 color space. Its greens, yellows, and cyans are a bit undersaturated, but overall, colors are what you would expect them to be in HDR. Something we don't see too often is that this TV's coverage of the wider Rec 2020 space is great, although it has the same problems with greens, yellows, and cyans. This TV's extremely high brightness and wide color gamut also give it a spectacular color volume, as it can portray an extremely wide range of colors at both high and low luminance levels. Moving on to processing, the trend of this TV being great in some parts and inadequate in others continues. Let's start with the good, the TV's low-quality content smoothing. It does a great job of smoothing out macro-blocking when watching low bitrate content through streaming services, and it does it while preserving details well. Now, the bad. The TV's upscaling is quite poor. Upscaled images aren't clear or sharp, and finer details are mostly lost in the process. Hard-coded text is hard to make out too, so basically, this TV is great for watching low bitrate but high resolution content from streaming platforms, but it's not the TV to watch your old-school DVDs on. Stick to modern media sources. Like most TVs, it uses Pulse Width Modulation, or PWM, to dim its backlight. This TV flickers at a low 320 Hz, which is low enough that you'll notice it if you're sensitive to flicker. Finishing up the processing section with a bang. This TV automatically removes judder from all sources with no additional settings required. Yes, the roller coaster continues. Grab your controller or your mouse and keyboard and let's do some gaming. When it comes to response time, you've heard this before. The TV has an excellent response time for minimal blur behind fast moving objects, but it's worse when coming out of dark states. You'll see a blurry trail behind the brighter object, which we call black smearing. It is at its worst when blacks are transitioning to dark colors, so the entire scene is darker tones, but it performs better when the scene is a mixture of dark and bright content. That said, we've seen worse dark scene performance than this, and the TV's overall response time is very fast for an LED TV. The TV's input lag is excellent. Gaming on this thing is very responsive. However, it's slower than many TVs, especially if you're not gaming at 120Hz. This is unfortunate, as the TV cannot properly display Chroma 444 in both 1080p and 4K at 120Hz, so you must choose between more color compression with a faster refresh rate and input lag, or no compression at 60Hz. This TV has two HDMI 2.1 ports, both capable of up to 4K at 120Hz. That's great, but as we've just said, 
the TV can't properly display Chroma 444 when running at 120 Hz. That's especially problematic if you plan to use this TV as a PC monitor, as subsampling is more noticeable with black text on white backgrounds, which is common on PCs. Furthermore, this TV has weird VRR behavior. While technically the TV has a wide VRR range of up to 120 Hz, above 105 Hz, the TV exhibits a strange tearing effect near the bottom of the screen, as if that part of the screen did not have VRR, while the rest of it does. For that reason, we state that this TV's effective VRR range caps out at 105 Hz. Finally, this TV exhibits weird behavior at 1440p. Listen to this. When connected to a computer, the TV refuses to run at 1440p at 60 Hz, but we were able to force 1440p at 120Hz on the PC without problems. On consoles, however, the TV refuses to run at 1440p on the PS5 in both 60Hz and 120Hz, but the TV works fine at 1440p at 60Hz, but not 1440p at 120Hz on the Xbox Series consoles. This is all quite disappointing for what could have otherwise been a standout LED TV for gaming. Speaking of consoles, this TV is impressive when it works correctly. The lack of Chroma 444 at 120Hz isn't nearly as noticeable on consoles, and anyway, the PS5 is limited to Chroma 422 when playing HDR content at 120Hz in 4K. The Xbox Series X, however, is capable of Chroma 444 in HDR at 120Hz in 4K, so you lose that with this TV. Unfortunately, the TV's VRR issues are harder to deal with on consoles than on PC, as you can't easily cap your frame rate at 105fps to avoid tearing. The 1440p issues are disappointing, but since the TV supports 4K at 120Hz, you're not likely to be bothered by the TV's quirky 1440p behavior. The Xbox Series S also supports 4K at 120Hz output, even if it's internally running games in 1440p, so that won't be an issue either. Considering how bulky the speakers are on the TV, you'd figure they'd sound pretty good, right? Well, they're not terrible for a TV, but they're not better than some of the much thinner TVs we've tested. They're certainly good enough for clear dialogue, but you would expect earth-shattering bass. I mean, look at how thick this TV is. But sadly, this isn't the case. The bass is disappointing, and you still need to pair a soundbar to the TV if you want truly good sound. The TV doesn't get that loud, which is a bummer as there's significantly more distortion at high volume levels, and the quieter the TV is, the more likely you are to raise the volume. The TV passes through a ton of advanced audio formats from Dolby and DTS, which is great. Unfortunately, it's limited to LPCM 2.0, as it can't pass through the full uncompressed LPCM 7.1 signal. So this brings us to the main question. Should you buy this TV? Well, it's very good when it works well, but it has too many issues to recommend at the price it typically sells for. There are issues with VRR, 1440p, lack of chroma 444 at 120Hz, the narrow viewing angle, and the poor pre-calibration accuracy. It's a lot. That's too bad because, in some respects, it's truly a standout performer. But as it is, you'll get better performance from the iSense U8K at a much cheaper price tag. The Hisense's contrast is a bit worse than the Sharp with local dimming enabled, but it has less blooming and aloing with less noticeable lighting zone transitions, leading to slightly better performance in dark rooms. The Hisense also has significantly better pre-calibration accuracy and gets brighter than the Sharp. It also has 4K at 144Hz support on two of its HDMI ports, and it has no issues with 1440p. It's just a much better package overall. Or, if you want a more popular brand, the Sony X90L is a more comprehensive package than the Sharp, also for a cheaper price. The Sony isn't supposed to be able to compete with the Sharp, as the Sharp is marketed and sold as a premium TV, but the Sony is ultimately the better choice. Sure, it's not nearly as bright as the Sharp is, and its contrast isn't nearly as good, but the Sony has vastly better processing and less banding, with lower input lag. It's also much more accurate before any calibration, and as we've said, it's cheaper. Listen, if the Sharp ever drops in price, it could be worth getting, as it is still an extremely capable gaming TV, and it excels when watching 4K HDR movies from streaming services. But as it stands, this TV is a disappointment, even with all of its strengths. That's all we have to say about the Sharp Aquos XLED FV1. If you want a more detailed write-up on the TV, check out our written review. The link is in the description below. Until next time, I'm Pio from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. So keep these direct like... <laughs> so keep these direct... Like <laughs> so keep these direct... 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 Yeah. So keep these direct like... <laughs>
and does so easily if you keep direct light. <laughs> 